Fanfan, and today we have a guest, Chandra Seidel. <laughs> and this is going to be my first book haul video. So I recently turned 22. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so old. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, um, I bought a bunch of new books. I got a couple of books for my birthday. And Chandra went with me to spend my birthday money on the books at a second hand store. So today we're going to look at everything we got. So we're going to say what we thought about them and what we expect them to be like. So if you have read any of these books, please post in the comments below. Give me a synopsis, a short review. Uh, I gave it four stars or no, it sucked. Stay or, away. Yeah, probably just give it back. So the first book on our list is actually one that Chandra got me for my birthday. It is this beautiful Brothers Grimm book. Look at it, golden pages, the little uh, ribbon bookmark like a Bible. Just look at it. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. No, it's amazing, it really is. And I wrote her a little letter. She wrote me a little note. Mm -hmm. May the stories not be grim. No. <laughs> so yeah, I expect I'm going to love this. I have wanted a book like this for years now. A book uh, compiling all the Brothers Grimm stories because these are the classic fairy tales in their gruesome version. It's really cool. So she actually bought me the same book for my birthday, which was in April. And um, <laughs> I've read about half of the stories. They're all short stories, obviously. So I like to read them just before going to bed and, and whatnot. And um, the Cinderella one specifically, they actually cut off the sisters' toes and their heels so they could fit into the shoes, which make it really interesting. And because of that, I really adore the story because it doesn't have any of the sugar coating that any of the movies or even though it's, it's not Disney fied. Yeah, it's not Disney fied. So this is the hardcore grimdark Disney. So I'm really keen on this one. Next up we have The Land of the Painted Caves. You won't believe <laughs> what we figured out after she bought it. So this one is a fantasy but based in the prehistoric times, which I was so keen for. Just even I was excited because she was she literally came back from where she bought it. She's like, Chandra, look what I found. It's prehistoric. How cool would this be? And then we kind of figured out that this is the sixth book in the in the series. Yeah. It's not the first or the second or the third. <laughs> Earth's children number six. I don't know if you can see that. But it's Earth's children number six. So that means I have to buy these now. Yeah, and they all I have to be the same. Out. This book, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm so glad I found it. I have never read a prehistoric fantasy. It's usually medieval, mm. so I'm really keen on doing this. On getting. I'm excited. Way. I think it would be great. Really so yeah, sad. I might be giving this one away and then getting the rest of the series <laughs> just as a as a set together because it I need be them now. Mm. The next book is this interesting little number. The Oracle Book, Answers to Life's Questions. We've already had so much fun <laughs> with this book. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so how it works is you ask the book a question, like, uh, what is life, Oracle Book? And then you open up on a random page, and then it says, it has a little picture and then a short note on the side, astrology. Scorpio, the sign of the Scorpio indicates there's nothing to worry about. So Yay! Nothing, nothing to, to worry, worry about. about. <laughs> so, I think we might ask this book some hints and tips on what we can expect from the other books. I, I, I just need to ask one question. Oracle book, do you speak the truth? Mm, that's a serious one. The sign of the scales counsels you to consider another's feelings. I think it's telling you to consider the book's feelings. It doesn't want to actually tell the truth in this specific question. Oracle book, are you insecure? The psychic senses you are not ready for the answer <laughs> yet. 
<laughs> wait, wait up. <laughs> Oracle book. Are you sentient? You've rolled a five. Providence supports you as long as you take care of yourself. Okay. So is that a yes? I think it's a... I'm not going to tell you. Okay. It's playing with you. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been outsmarted by a book. Let's continue. <laughs> so, the next one is an Afrikaans book. Paulus Sagrab book. Okay. Why don't you read us a random joke? A random one. And then we can rate it. Give me a random page. <laughs> Oracle book. Give us a random page. The Wheel of Fortune card is so assures you it will come to pass. So then it is random page. I don't know if this is working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. So it's so much fun playing with the book, like really. Okay. Okay. Breda Kante. Trotse maan. My sien's naam is Hartloos Willem Dexels van der Merwe. Hi, die dominee. Gebuit! Meneer A. Steenkamp, Ospis, 32, for Bobbers, swap. <laughs> okay, I can say. I keep now the dog, he did grab and found us a grab book. The book is the club, the in the first kind of blood, I fear. I still fear he lays the pinot for the ice. Nee, thank you. Next for my name. Maar as jy moet skink, skink so klein de boekie. Don't, maybe, maybe, no, I don't know. Let me try, it's not just like a Ah, hey! Wie is a student aan dokter? Waarvoor het u daar die patiënt geopereer? Vir 100 rand. Nee, ek bedoel, wat het hy gehad? Oh, jy moet dan. Ok, ek kan nou like dat. Ek sê, so funny vibration of being ridiculous. <laughs> ok, I got two books about mice from our friend Odette. The one is Kenneth Graham, The Wind in the Willows. The other one is Time Stops for No Mouse. So I read the synopsis of this one and I'm so keen for it. It's about a love story between a clockmaker mouse and the other little mouse girl who comes in and she like suspicious and she has a mystery to her. So it's a romance about Between mice? mice. That's adorable. <laughs> Hermes must be daring. He must be vigilant and he doesn't know how. But as sure as corn is sweet and cheese goes moldy, her oh. must rescue Mrs. Poplinger and in the process find out what kind of mouse he really is. That's so cute! Okay, yes. And just look at this cover, it's so beautiful. Dear Oracle Book, will I like my mouse stories? <laughs> you have drawn the Prince of Cuffs. Yes! With the help of a man who is not afraid of his feminine side. <laughs> who is this man? <laughs> Do we know anyone with a feminine side? A man with a feminine side. Ooh, we know a lot of men with feminine sides, but they're all like terrified of them. This is true. This is very true. Next up is a book that is technically Chandra's, so she can have it. I'm so excited for this book! The cover is actually what drew me to the book. I have not read the synopsis. I read the first sentence of the synopsis. And I it's, really it's decided... It's basically the cover. It looks cool. Yeah, it looks really cool. Umberto Eco returns to the Middle Ages with Badalino, a wondrous, provocative, beguiling tale of history, myth, and invention. So that already caught my attention and I decided to buy the book and I'm really excited and I want to. 
It's mushy. <laughs> it just looks so old school. Can I please see the oracle? Alright, book. <laughs> <laughs> oracle book. <laughs> oracle book. Please tell me. Well, I enjoy Umberto Eco Badalino. At the bottom of your teacup is a bird shape. Look outside your inner circle. <laughs> Berlin. What does that mean? Oracle book. What do you mean? <laughs> Aries. The sign of the ram propels you towards a positive outcome. So yes. Great. You will enjoy the book. Awesome. Is Orphans of the Carnival. So this part synopsis is basically circus girl. And I kind of like the writing style, I read a bit of it, I like the writing style, and I love the Night Circus, uh, I think it was there, so I really love Night Circus, so I was like, Let, let's try, let's try another circus book, so I'm really keen on this one, um, yeah, let's see, Orphans of the Carnival, it's another kind of dark circus thing, so I think, I, I have good feelings about this. Most circus themed books are fairly dark, surprisingly, even though it, it, it's really ironic seeing a circus that usually brings joy and happiness. So, isn't there this thing of like the crying clown? Okay, yeah, most people are scared of crowns. Crowns. <laughs> crowns. Clowns. Hmm. Anyways, I think it would be interesting and I'm very keen to see what the outcome of this book will be. Next up, The Valkyrie Song. So this is a thriller about a detective stumbling upon the crime committed by a bunch of assassin girls who have been part of a training academy that started in the Cold War. So this is kind of Black Widow-ish. It really is beautiful. And I like the fact that even though the cover is very dark, the red really pops. So that's very eye-catching and I love that. Next up. Francine Rivers. So these are three novellas by Francine Rivers. Now her books are usually, I've read a bunch of them before, her books are usually Bible stories that she takes and she kind of gives a more realistic twist. She delves a bit deeper into the characters and their motivation. She takes what's already in the Bible and she gives it some more in. Makes it more entertaining and it helps especially for um, teenagers. They really appreciate the Francine River books because then they don't have to go through the Bible and they find that the Bible is very difficult to understand compared to these books. And it helps you connect with the characters a bit more. Her, my favourite book from her is definitely One Life with the King, which tells the story of Esther. Then we get into This Bicycles. Now these books were so cheap at the hospice where we got these. <laughs> These yeah. books were probably like five rand each. They, they were, were five, five rand, rand each. <laughs> so we got like a lot of them. I think we have ten. <laughs> and we're gonna go through them kind of rapid fire, but who are they spicy? Very spicy. Especially this one. So this is a book from 1963. Now let me just read this cover, this synopsis for you. The strange encounter with an unfettered morality exposes the dark passions of the civilized visitors. Is this the Garden of Eden or a savage paradise of unshackled lust? Goodness. Well, that says quite a bit, especially for a 1960 book. 1963. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be interesting. Very interesting. And then we have. All of the and soppy all romances. <laughs> soppy romances slash sexual novellas. Mm. Novellas is such a beautiful word for these books. <laughs> so we're just going to go rapid fire on these. Seriously. Reading the co Sometimes just the title, sometimes just a bit of the synopsis. Some of these synopsises are really entertaining. So let's see. Okay. So this one is historical, The Inherited Bride, 
Now, is this kind of going to be incest? Your dad dies, you get his wife. Ah! Uh, How else do you inherit a bride? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> my jacket. Aragubo, tell us. Is she inheriting somebody else's bride? Is he is he inheriting somebody else's bride? The tea leaves have formed the shape of a cut. Set your sights even higher. He's gonna inherit more than somebody <laughs> else's bride. He's gonna inherit more than one bride. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> the billionaire's housekeeper's mistress. Okay. The billionaire's housekeeper's mistress. What a title! <laughs> Next up, we have this one, which includes three short stories. This one says Jessica is selling kisses to raise money for a local charity. Oh, okay, Jessica, if that's what you call it, charity work. I I think it sounds sweet. Is she is she asking money too much? Do you know how much money she's asking? It doesn't say. Perhaps she's more. It's not an economic she, novel. <laughs> She's working on her inner prostitute, you know. Some people need experience to actually become what they want to be one day. Ooh, but Colt arms. Hands her a fist full of cash for all the kisses. First, who gives cash in a fist full? How rude. Agreed. And uh, that can't be much money. Anyway, yes. <laughs> like it's South African, <laughs> Rand. A fist full of cash is not going to get you nothing. anywhere. <laughs> It either means her kisses are cheap, or her kisses are cheap. That's it. <laughs> what the Greek can't resist. Apparently it's a redhead. Ah, but you know these, <laughs> these pictures don't mean anything really. She refuses to let this dark-hearted Greek intimidate her. I have just the most straightforward forward title ever. Big Shot Bachelor. Straight to the point. I love it. Oh, sounds so romantic. What am I going to do? <laughs> These are just going to be so fun to read on holiday. Agreed. Next up we have A Night in the Prince's Bed. Yeah, no synopsis necessary. We know, we know what this is going to be. Yeah. Just the most obvious title ever. The Mediterranean Prince's Captive Virgin. <laughs> like, was this the working title and they were just like, slap that on there. Doesn't matter. I love kidnapping stories. Um, yeah. Then we have Interview with the Playboy. This also says quite a, uh, quite a bit. I actually read the synopsis uh, previously and essentially what happens is there's a journalist and she needs to talk to the playboy and she wants to get an interview with him, but he refuses to talk to journalists because he hates them. So she disguises herself as um, a worker in a, on a cruise. I'm pretty sure that's illegal to interview someone without their knowledge. No, but like, I mean, something. how many romantic stories <laughs> have you read and then it's illegal? And I have tall, tanned and Texan. Oh, God. She's on a mission to find her sexy side. Men have never given tomboy Dini Karch a second look, but that's all about to change. She's signing up for two weeks at a notorious island retreat to discover her inner sex kitty. Wow. And there'll be no stopping her. Like, what is this? <laughs> I think she will go through a very important journey in her life. Reach her inner sex kitty. And reach the inner sex kitty. And discover that a tough Texan cowboy is no match for a sex kitten unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was our book haul. I'll post all of the books down in the description so that you can have a look if there's one that seems especially interesting or spicy to you. Please comment. And then if you have read any of these books, please comment and let us know what you thought about them before we end up regretting something. Then we're going to ask the Oracle Book the ultimate question. Oracle Book, are you bullshit?
Okay. The palm reader sees a curving marriage line. The circumstances would change for the better. I feel like I've heard the book's feelings. Because you did. I'm sorry. How but... dare you? Oracle book, are you okay? The palm reader sees a trident shaped in the palm. Use a more creative approach. Okay, no, he's just upset with you. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Oracle book. Oracle book, will you ever work for Antoinette von Kron ever again? Or are you mine now? <laughs> the sun. As center of the universe, guarantees you'll be admired for your actions. What does that <gasps> Watch out! I'm <laughs> mine now! <laughs> Okay, so what's my talent in cheap space? Can you actually for the camera? You have totally a blur when you end the part which is randomly drawn. So you need to do this when you try and break the screen. Oracle book. Give us a random page. Oh, oh no. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do that again. Yes, that, that's good. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, so. Okay, okay. Oh, what's wrong? Okay, okay. Tell me, this is a long crop in the battery. I know. So, this is a long crop in it, it's a good crop. Rumors must be daring. He must be really, really blah blah Sexual values. Okay. Is it too mournful? I'm just gonna read you a bit. He has a new role in mind. Housekeeper by day, bed mate by night. Don't look entertained at all. What? <laughs> Legs. Hat. <laughs> These K's, my common sense. No, it was not good say. Okay, my but Hans knows it. In the description, Pause. just in case you want to take it. Okay.